Hi class, this is the last lesson of chapter 11. We're on 11.4, arithmetic and geometric sequence and series. We're dealing with word problems this time, which is the reason why we do math in general, so that we could solve problems that occur in our everyday real world life. So these are the formulas that we're going to be using. You've been introduced to every single one of them, so I won't talk about them, except for one. This one right here you've never seen before. But really, class, it's actually just these two combined. What happened is to get this formula that I circled here in red, this formula, a sub n, equals this. And so in for this a sub n, we're just going to substitute this into here. So the reason why this formula right here is beneficial is because we don't need to know the value of the last term to find the sum or to find any one of these variables in here. It just has one fewer variable. So that's kind of nice to have that one. We are going to use that formula from time to time. Okay, so let's start getting some real world, real world problems. Number one, a woman made 35 grand her first year on the job. Each year, she received a 10% raise. Okay, so how much did she earn in her 10th year on the job? So after she has been working for 10 years, what's her salary if she re receives a 10% increase in her pay? So the first thing we have, to re we have to understand is, is this arithmetic or is this geometric? Class, when you receive a 10% raise, it means that you're multiplying your salary by 10%. So what's going to happen is when I said multiplying, that's going to tell us, oh, this one's geometric. Okay, so we're dealing with this column right here. So now it says, how much did she earn in the 10th year? It doesn't say the sum of the first 10 years, just that 10th year all by itself. So that's going to tell us it's this formula right here. So what is the value of a sub 10 if the first term number or her, her first year she made 35 grand? Multiply that by the common ratio. Now, class, the rate is 10%. So what we need to do is she made the 35,000, so she made 100% her second year as she did her first year, but then she got a 10% raise. So we need to add that to 100, and we get 110. So as a decimal, that is 1.1. So the common rate, we multiply her salary by 1.1 each and every successive year. So that's why the rate is 1.1. Raised to the n minus 1. So n is 10. So 10 minus 1 goes up here. So class, I'm just going to have you do that in your calculator now. It's going to be 35,000 multiplied by 1.1 raised to the ninth power. So do this part first and then multiply it by 35,000. If you do that in, the, in your calculator, how much does she make at the 10th year? She makes $82,528.528.17. That's how much she would make her 10th year. Bottom line, class, if your employer says that they're going to give you a 10% raise every year on the job, you take that gladly and don't ask any questions because a 10% raise is very, very significant. So knowing that, what were her total earnings during her first 10 years on the job? So her first year, second year, third year, fourth year, all the way to the 10th year, if you add up all that money combined in all those years, how much money does she make? So as you can see on this one, we want to find a geometric sum. So now we are going to use this one. So S sub n, the sum of the first 10 years. The sum of the first 10 years is the value of the first year, which is 35,000. Okay, then we're going to multiply it by 1 minus r raised to the end. So multiply that by 1 minus the rate, which is 1.1 raised to the nth, and the nth is 10 years. So that's going to be raised to the 10th power. Divide that by 1 minus r. So 1 minus the 1.1. So class, once again, I'm not going to take the time to solve all of this. You guys can simplify order of operations and get the right answer here. Do that on your own, but you should get the answer of 557,000. 557,000. 
$806.86. This is how much you would make in the first 10 years. This is the value of the first 10 years, S sub 10. Okay? If you wanted to, you could do the sigma notation, which would be the sum as n goes from the first year to the tenth year of the first year, which is 35,000. Multiply that by n minus 1 raised to the, or sorry, sorry, sorry. It would be times 1.1 raised to the n minus 1. So you could also do that in your calculator. And once again, you would get this value right here if you did that in sigma notation. Okay? Problem number two. A piece of machinery, it's valued at $80,000. So picture this as like, I don't know, a tractor or some sort of um, construction equipment, whatever the case might be. It's depreciating $8,000 the first year, and then it depreciates $7,500 the second year, and then $7,000 the third year, and so on and so forth. So how much did this car, piece of machinery, whatever this thing is, depreciate the eighth year? So we got to ask ourselves the question, is this an arithmetic or is this geometric? So it depreciated 8,000 and then 7,500, so it went down 500 bucks. And then 7,000, so it went down another $500. So they're subtracting $5,000 every time or adding a negative 5,000. So now what we're talking about is we're talking arithmetic. Okay, so how much did the car depreciate the eighth year? You don't want to find a sum. You just want to find one individual year. So we're talking that top formula. So what is the value, or how much did it depreciate the eighth year? What is A sub 8 when A sub 1? Now, a lot of students make this mistake class. They think that this 80,000 is the value of the first term. It's not because it's depreciating. So the how much it depreciates is what we want to find. So it depreciated $8,000 the first year. So 8,000 is the value of the first term. 8,000 plus n minus 1, which n is 8 minus 1. That times the common difference. And the common difference is a negative $500. Okay? So now we're going to have a sub 8 equals 8,000 times 7, or sorry, plus 7 times a negative 500. So now we get a negative 3,500 when I multiply these two together. 8,000 minus that. So how much did it, it depreciate on the 8th year? It will have depreciated, in just that particular year, $4,500. Four thousand five hundred. Okay, the next one takes some thinking, so get ready for the next one. KARP, which is a radio station, it hears about KDUZ giving away t twins tickets, and it comes up with their own giveaway of its own. KARP will give away one thousand one hundred six dollars ninety cents cash on the first day, and then one thousand two hundred twenty nine dollars and thirty five cents on the last day. Adding the same dollar amount each day, this word is important right here, adding the same dollar amount each day to the previous day's prize money for a total of this much money. Now class, when it says total, that's telling you that this is the sum of the first n terms. A total is how much money altogether, so it's a sum. How much money will be given away on the second and third day? So if we know that they give away this much the first day, this is our value of a sub 1 and they give away this much on the last day, so this is the value of a sub n, how much will they give away on the second and third day? Well, this is arithmetic, because this adding right here is telling you that we're dealing with this side right here, a sub n. So if I find the common difference, maybe the common difference is 30 bucks, I can just add 30 to here two times to get the second and third day. Or if the difference is $100. I could just add 100 to this value right here two times to get the second and third day. Bottom line is I have to find what D is. So if I find out what D is right here, well now I have it made. Now I can't f use this formula just yet 
And the reason for that is because I don't know how many days there are. I don't know how many, how much n is. Okay, so I first have to find that. If they give you s sub n class, you can know right away that you're going to have to use one of these two formulas, either this one or this one. So in this particular example, you have the the first day, you have the nth day, and you have s sub n. So you have this one, you have this one, and you have this one. So being that you're given those three things, we can now find n, our unknown. So that's going to be our first step. So we have 70,000, 821, 25. That equals, this is the sum of the first n terms, that equals n, which is the first thing that we want to find, multiplied by, I'm going to erase this mess here, so times the quantity, a sub 1 plus a sub n. So 106... 0.9 plus 1229.35 all of that divided by 2 so let's now solve for n using algebra let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this so taking 70,000 that number multiplied by 2 we get the number 141,642.5. That equals n times the quantity, adding those two numbers up together of 106.9 and 1229.35. We get 1,336.25. Uh, So now simply dividing both sides by 1336, 1336.25. How many days is this radio station going to do this for? N equals, and we get a value of 106. So for 106 days, class, they're going to give away a certain amount of money so that at the end, they're going to totally give away a grand total of this much money. So if they started with 106.9, this is the value of the first day. So a sub 1 equals 106.9. 106.9. They're giving away this much money on the first day. How much are they giving away the second day, and how much are they giving away the third day? Well, if we want to find that, we know that for a total of 106 days, they're doing this for. So now, we know the value of the last term. We know the value of the first term, and we know how many days they're doing it for. So now let's find our common difference, which is D. So we'll do that over here. So A sub N is the value that they're giving away on the last day, which is this number right here, one. 1,229, 1,229.35. I'm going to run out of room here. Let me erase this and bring it to the bottom. So 1,229, 1,229.35. That equals the value of the first term, which is 106.9. 106.9 plus the quantity n minus 1, which now n minus 1 is n is 106. So 106 minus 1 multiplied by that common difference. And that's what I want to find. So I'm going to subtract. 106.9 from both sides. And then I get the answer of 1,122. 1,122.45. That equals this times D, which is 105 times D. So, to get our common difference, we're going to divide both sides by 105. 
1,122.45 divided by 105 is ten dollars and sixty nine cents. So class, this is what we really wanted to find. We wanted to find for the first day if they're giving away ten one hundred six dollars and ninety cents each and every day, they're going to give away ten dollars and sixty nine cents more than the day previous to it. So if I want to find a sub two, all I got to do is take one oh six point nine and add the common difference, which is ten sixty nine. And what number do I get? The second day, they're giving away one hundred seventeen dollars and fifty nine cents. So this is one of my answers. This is the value they're giving away the, se the second day. Now I want to find how much they're giving away the third day. Well, if I want to find how much they're giving away the third day, I just take the second day, which is 117.59, and add that common difference, which is $10.69. So what are they giving away the third day? Our answer is 128, $128.28. So this radio station is prepared to give away a total amount of money of this much as long as they start with $106.90 and they're going to add $10.69 with each successive day. Next one. A rubber ball dropped on a hard surface takes a se sequence of vertical bounces. Each bounce is 5 sevenths as high as the preceding height. The ball is dropped from 21 feet. So what height does it reach after the fourth bounce? Let's draw a little picture here, class. Let's see what we're dealing with. This ball is dropped at 21 feet, okay? And then it loses 5 seven. sorry, it bounces 5 sevenths as high as the preceding height. So that means it's losing some of its height. As we all know, when we drop like a tennis ball or drop a bouncy ball, it's going to hit, and then it's going to come back up, but not the full length, friction, and a variety of other things, gravity, so on and so forth makes it so that the ball doesn't bounce as high. So now it's going to bounce again, and it's going to hit the ground, and then it's going to come up not quite as high, and then bounce again, and so on and so forth. So letter A asks, what height does it reach after the fourth bounce? So here's the first bounce, second bounce, third bounce, fourth bounce, and what height does it reach after the fourth bounce? So we want to find this distance in red right here. Okay, so what we want to find here, class, is a value of a certain term. So is this arithmetic or is this geometric? When it is five-sevenths as high as the preceding one, what we're doing is we're multiplying each and every term by five-sevenths. So we're multiplying. This is geometric. So we're dealing with this side of the equation right here. So when it says what height does it reach after the fourth bounce? Here is the value of the first term. So there's a sub 1. That's 21. Here's a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and then as it comes back up again, here's a sub 5. So we want to find the fifth term. So what we were going to use here is we're going to use this formula. What is a sub 5? And this sounds kind of confusing because we think of a sub 4 because it's the fourth bounce. But we've got to remember that, we're at, that the 20, 21 is the first term. So here's like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then as it comes back up again, we want to find this height, which is the fifth term. So a sub 5 equals, here's our equation right here, the value of the first term, it starts at 21 feet off the ground. So 21 times that common ratio, which is this 5 sevenths right here. 5 sevenths times n minus 1. So n is 5, 5 minus 1. So what you're going to do in your calculator now is you're going to raise 5, or you're going to take 5 sevenths and raise it to the fourth power. What is 5 sevenths raised to the fourth? And then you're going to multiply that number by 21. And you get an answer of approximately. Five point four seven feet. Five point four seven feet. And hopefully these problems will somewhat make sense to you. 
it's going to hit the ground and then it's going to pop back up and it's not going to be the same height. It's going to lose a little bit each and every time. So hopefully that 5.47 makes sense to you. You should never get something above 21 feet because that's just breaking the laws of gravity. It's never going to happen. Okay. So now, letter B. This is our answer for letter A. For letter B, find the total distance traveled when the ball hits the ground for the fifth time. So we're going to have this bouncy ball. Here it is. It's going to bounce once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And there it hits the ball. There it hits the ground the fifth time. So find that total distance. Class total means sum, right? So I want to find a sum. So I know I'm going to be talking about a geometric sum, which means one of these two. When you do this one on accelerated math, I really encourage you to use the sigma. Okay, it's going to go a lot faster. So what we're going to do, find the total distance traveled when the ball hits the ground the fifth time. We're going to have a summation as n goes from the first term to the fifth term. Because here's one distance, two distance, three distance, four distance, five distances. So from the first term to the fifth term of a sub 1, which is 21, Multiply that by the rate, which is 5 sevenths, and raise that to the n minus 1. Now notice, class, these red distances right here, right? These are, our calculator is going to add up all of these. So 21 plus whatever this one is, maybe 15 feet, plus whatever this one is, maybe 12 and a half feet, plus whatever this one is. Our calculator is going to add all those up. But it wants the total distance, and there's distances as the ball goes back up to, isn't there? Your calculator so far doesn't have this distance, or this one, or this one, or this one. So we have to tell our calculator to add those ones as well. So we're going to have this summation in red, but then we're also going to have another summation in green. Because we wanted to add up this one, two, three, four. We need to tell our calculator to add up four more distances. So it's going to be another summation. This time, it is as n goes from the second term. This right here is a sub 1. And this one right here and right here, it's the same value. This is a sub 2. So I want to tell our calculator to start at the second term. So second, third, fourth, and fifth is what I'm going to tell my calculator to add up. So it goes from 2 to 5, and then it's the exact same thing as it is right here. The first term is 21 times the common ratio, which is 5 sevenths, raised to the n minus 1. So you're going to put both of these into your calculator, okay? And then you're going to add them up together. And when you do that, you should get a height of 98.67 feet. 98.67 feet. And once again, hopefully that makes sense to you. It shouldn't be something outrageous. You're going to have 21 feet plus like 15 feet plus 15 feet plus like 12 and a half feet plus 12 and a half feet plus like 9 feet, so on and so forth. Whatever, that, whatever those numbers are, you're going to add all of them up together, and it's going to be 98.67. Okay. Last one of these kind, problem number five. KDUZ is planning to give away a total of 1,425 twins tickets. This total is a big word. It means the sum, right? <clears throat> it's going to be in the month of June. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the others have 31. Wait a second. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the other days have 31, except for February has 28. So June has 30 days in that month. So that's going to be important. The station wants to increase the number of tickets given away each day by three. Okay, so it's going to give away a certain amount of tickets, and then it's going to increase by three, increase by three, increase by three, so on and so forth, until they give away a total of 1,045. So this right here is S sub n. This is S sub n. The 30 right here, there's 30 days in June. So this is the number of terms that I'm going to add, or this is the number of terms that there are. So this is n. It wants to increase the number of tickets given, given away each day by 3. So what is this 3 class? 
this is going to be our common difference, D. We're going to add 3 in each and every time. If I have a common difference, D, this should scream to you, I'm talking arithmetic over here. Okay, so I'm not talking geometric. How many should the station give away the first day? So what you want to find is you want to find A sub 1. This is our unknown. Once we find A sub 1, we have our answer. So class, if you have the sum, if you're given the sum of something, you know you're going to be dealing with one of these two equations. Because these, the, these are the sum equations for arithmetic sequences. So notice on this one, I need the value of the first term, and I need the value of the last term. Well, I don't know the value of my first term. That's what I need to know. That's what I'm going to find out. And I don't know how many tickets are given away the last day. This, sent, this paragraph in orange doesn't tell me that. So I can't use this formula. So that's going to tell me I have to use this one. The sum of the first 30 days, so S sub 30, is 1425 twins tickets. It's this value right here. So 1425. That's going to equal N, which there are 30 days in June. So they're going to be doing this for 30 days times the quantity 2 times a sub 1. That's our variable, 2 a sub 1. Plus n minus 1. n is the number 30, so 30 minus 1 times that common difference. They want to give 3 each day more than they did the previous day. So 3 is my common difference. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. So once we find um, a sub 1, we're all done. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And now my denominator is gone. So now on the left side, I'm going to have 2,850. That equals 30 times the quantity 2a sub 1 plus 29 multiplied by 3. OK, let's keep on cleaning up some things. Divide both sides by 30. So 2850 divided by 30. 2850 divided by 30. That is the number 95. So 95, that equals 2a sub 1 plus 29 times 3. 29 times 3 is an 87. So plus 87. OK, almost done. Subtract 87 from both sides. Subtract 87. 95 minus 87 is an 8. That equals 2 a sub 1. And lastly, divide both sides by 2. And what is the value of a sub 1? It is 4. So what are you actually finding here, class? It's telling you that if you start off with four tickets, and if you add three, so the second day, June 2nd, you give away seven tickets, June 3rd, you give away th 10 tickets, so on and so forth, at the end of June, you're going to give a total of four, 1,425 Twins tickets. All right, that concludes our world problems for this lesson. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions as you're trying your Excel math objectives tomorrow.